Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. So I'm gonna be going over in this video today how I made roughly $34,000 in the uh, the span of, uh, well, a little bit less now, but um, in the span of two days trading uh, gold. Now, I did take some losses on GJ here. My profit was initially $15,000, which would put me at about $34,000 profit, but it took a 1% loss uh, on GJ, which sadly it did go up and hit my target for 2%. But it is what it is, you know what happens. So I'm gonna pretty much go over how I made $31,000, $30,000 in the last two trading days. You can see the 25th and the 26th on my 300K FTMO account. So if you look at the top right hand side of your screen, you'll see FTMO and both of these account numbers match up. I'm gonna refresh the screen here as well. Uh, move this out of the way and then also show you that this is a actually a funded account so you can see i do not have an end date so it's not a challenge and then there is a profit split i'm gonna refresh the screen one more time and then you guys can uh you guys can uh, see that there right so so anyways i'm gonna pretty much go over how me and my signal room pretty much caught the majority of this bear move uh to the downside how i've been trading gold now i did call out a couple of signals here on uh, gold Right, so I've been calling gold shorts since, let me kind of scroll up on my signal chat here, right? So this was last night's short right here, right? February 26th, I called a short at 1763, which last night it was trading around this range. Yo, what's good everybody? So it's pretty much the next day and um, I'm gonna be making this video or kind of making this video a little bit later um, because I kind of got the important part in but pretty much it got messed up in the rendering and I had to leave it like raw files. So luckily I was left with the intro and I was able to save it, but I'm pretty much going to be going down uh, the entire strategy itself and breaking it down. So to go over this as simple as possible, right? We know the market moves in waves, right? When markets trending downwards, we have lower lows, lower highs, right? When market is actually trending bullish, it's the opposite. We have higher highs and higher lows, right? This high is obviously higher than the previous high because it closed higher. This low is obviously higher than the previous low because it closed higher, right? This is a bullish sequence. Now with gold, we're actually in a bear sequence. We have lower lows and lower highs, right? This high is obviously lower than this high, hence the lower high, right? Simple kind of structure uh, breakdown there. And that's what we can actually see uh, going on with price currently, right? We have price forming a sequence of lower lows and lower highs and I'm gonna be taking advantage of this by pretty much looking to short the lower high points right now determining where the lower high is actually going to start can be a little bit of a difficult process especially for someone who's a little bit newer but right but this is where we typically manage our risk and look for high risk reward ratio trades just in case you're wrong you know you can get back in uh, later on and hopefully right that time make back your loss plus more so pretty much if I were to break down how I'm gonna be trading gold all of 2021 is we are going to determine right start taking notes we're going to determine the overall direction and the trend on the daily and the four hour time frame right we're going to be marking off our lower lows lower highs etc etc right now when it came to most of these positions on gold i'm going to be going over these positions that i took up here in specific which are that i did call the signal room right so pretty much what i like to kind of do is measure the type of pullback now fibonacci isn't some mystical magical tool that'll tell you exactly where to get in and where to get out right we simply use fibonacci retracement again to measure how far prices pulled back right so after you determine the trend on the higher time frames right you want to determine if price has given you a pullback if price hasn't given you a pullback then wait for the pullback you don't want to just randomly go short right in the middle of an impulse because then it's more of like a higher risk type of trade right so all we're simply going to be doing is building an edge right and why that's super important right so i noticed my mic was a little bit farther away from me so hopefully the audio got a little bit better but pretty much why we we want to build an edge right and high find high probability setups is because we want the odds to be in our favor as best as possible and we can do this through finding multiple confluences that kind of correspond with each other Right, so we know on the daily and the four hour time frame we're bearish, we're forming lower lows and lower highs. So I'm gonna wait for price to pull back at least to the 38.20 and above because that would be a sufficient enough pullback for me to look to go short 
right? And then look to hop on the trend. So if the daily and the four hour are telling me buy, I'm gonna hop down to the hour, 30 minute time frames. And oh, my bad. If the daily and the four hour are only telling me sell, right? I'm gonna hop down to the uh, hour time frame, 30 minute time frame, and only look to go short, not against it. Because what can happen is if we go and we decide to buy at any point in time, right? Price can flip over on us and continue in the direction of the trend. I'm sure you guys have heard of the trend is your friend, and that's very true. Right, so now when it came down to gold, why it started going short is because we have this previous internal level of structure, right? We have our main structure points, which can be found, you know, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, even previously, right? We have lower high, lower low. These are our main structure points. And within the trend, there's other trends, right? Then we, then we can have, you know, higher highs, higher lows, Right, and these are all things on lower time frames, right? Just keep in mind where your main structure points are and your minor structure points are, right? Clearly, this was an area of interest, right? Where buyers held this level at a certain point in time, sellers broke under, right? Notice what happened when sellers broke under, price came all the way back up, tested it, and then continued to trade lower, right? So noticing this, right, we have this area here where we know on the Fibonacci retracement tool, this is a 61.8 retracement right along with that we do have this very first price action signal which is a bearish variation pattern then we have another bearish variation pattern also a double top at resistance at a 61.8 so what is the probability price is going to go down versus going up i would say there's more confirmation that price is a higher probability to continue in the bearish trend than going up and breaking new highs right once i identified that all i simply did was go down to a lower time frame right saw that price gave me this pullback here right after the double top had already formed price gave me this pullback and all i simply did is waited for a confirmation which was this one here i went short stops went above the highs and my targets initially were all the way down here but obviously i didn't hold that position i ended up getting out for just around two and a half times my risk which i ended up getting out at the end of this big candlestick here right that was that trade now when it came to the other trade and also i want to add the moving averages because i know people are going to ask me about the moving averages right on the daily and the four hour time frame if red is over blue we're looking to go short simple as that if blue is over red we're looking to go long four hour time frame now typically when we have a pullback the blue is going to cross over the red just as long as we're maintaining our main structure points because keep in mind price is king as long as we're maintaining these main structure points, then we're gonna be looking to continue the short, right? So I'm still looking to go short even though the blue was over right at this point in time. Now, on the four hour time frame, we had broken under our minor level of structure here, right? And we could see that on the hour time frame. Now we had an initial rejection here, right? We have the break. All we're looking for is a retest. Why? Buyers held this level as a level of support. As you can see, it held four times. Once sellers broke through, buyers brought price all the way up. We had this retest and then we had this rejection, which this is our rejection candlestick right here, right? This big bearish candle, right? That was one confirmation. I did not enter here, um, mainly because of the time and I didn't like the signal itself, right? Now, when price had actually came up, formed this second retest and rejection and the moving averages were being maintained red over blue and we're maintaining under the 50 SMA, which the 50 SMA is a longer term pullback support and the 20 is a shorter term pullback support, then that's when I actually uh, decided to go short there, right? So stops again above this level of resistance. I had about a 50 pip stop loss. Uh, on this trade and then my targets were this low down here for about four times my risk now i ended up getting out for a little bit around three and a half times my risk um pretty much when this candlestick closed and i saw that price had rejected support notice how we closed back above support that's when i decided to get out why because i had stacked multiple positions so i went short here i went short here and i wanted to get out because i was happy with the risk reward that i ended up getting on the trade and i was happy with the profits that i made on that position as well we also do have this more or less head and shoulders pattern that formed here on this hour time frame again daily and four hour told me to go short right or daily and four hour price was telling me short so all i did was wait for a short opportunity on the hour time frame right it's as simple as that right and now when it came to these other positions right so I'm gonna go over this one last position that we uh, I ended up taking here, which, you know, this is 
where I made a lot of money on. That's this is where I had like that 20k day, I believe, right? Or the $15,000 day, right? Um, before my GJ loss. So price had ended up closing under support, right? Um, I don't know what's going on with my replay mode. For some reason, I gotta re re redo my trading view, right? But let's pretend that this didn't happen, right? This big bearish candlestick closed under my four hour support, right? Once it closed under the four hour support and then this candlestick closed under as well, that was the confirmed break of support for me. Now, all I did, 30 minute time frame, right? Big bearish, big bearish engulfing didn't enter there because I was trading on a 15 minute time frame, right? But I saw the big bearish engulfing candlestick. Now, I had an early position around this area here which my stops were above this wick here. And I was targeting this level of support, which would have given me a little bit uh, more than a one to one and a half. But really I was aiming for this area down here, which I obviously didn't get out there. I didn't get five times my risk or else that would have been amazing. I ended up getting out pretty much at the end of this big breakout candlestick because I was already up three times my risk, right? Which I could have definitely held for way longer and I should have, and I could have possibly potentially squeezed out an extra 270 pips realistically if i would have held this position i would have squeezed out an extra 120 pips because once price broke this resistance here i would have gone down right now i ended up entering here off of the second rejection of resistance and i also entered a position here with the same stop loss being here then the initial target being a one to one on this one right and then um pretty much got out at the same area I had to close both of those positions there right so the risk to reward i did notice on my journal that it wasn't the greatest on this second position and i shouldn't have taken it but that was a mistake that i made and you know i'm gonna have to go back and really make sure this week that i really stick to that one to two risk to reward ratio because i could have eaten up a bunch of profits for no reason because the risk to reward didn't really make sense but i was also at the same time betting that price would actually go down and make new lows and actually test this 1731 level why because this is more or less like clean traffic that we have here until this 1731 resistance so that's what i was kind of betting on if that's how you want to call it but again when it comes down to trading right and how i'm going to be trading gold for the rest of the year i'm going to be looking for one of two things one identifying the trend right let's say price is breaking levels of support instead of making levels of resistance right and breaking through resistance all i'm going to look for is for a pullback to our previous low see if that previous low hold is a level of resistance and then look to go short from there right and in a situation like this my entry will be somewhere along here stops above this high and then targets will be this low right here right and if that isn't the case right then what i would look for is for a steeper pullback possibly into a fib 50 percent or a 618% and then look to continue the trade lower unless price breaks this and then if price were to reverse in trend right then I'll look for the retest of this area and then look to take it back up to the highs right so pretty simple I hope you guys all understand this concept right I'm looking to pretty much go short at areas of so uh, areas of resistance Right, so it doesn't necessarily have to be like these areas down here, but notice how I kind of have all these areas marked off for these certain price zones, right? So again, quick recap for your notes, how I'm gonna be trading gold on the rest of 2020 and how I've been able to make a profit on gold so far, right? Daily and four hour time frame. identify the trend, right? Once you've identified the trend on the daily and the four hour time frame, start building confluences for your trade setup and determine if that specific setup has a higher probability of going down versus going up of going in your direction versus going against you right the more confluences you have the higher the probability of the setup is and what you're doing is you're building an edge once you've determined what your edge is and price has a higher probability of going in your favor all you have to do is manage your risk and make sure your risk to reward is typically two times what you're currently risking right Pretty simple concept you know it sounds a lot simpler than what it really is especially when you're trading live money right but that's kind of how it is so that's pretty much about it for this video so hopefully you guys did benefit a little bit off of this video if you want to join my free telegram where i do post more free content then there'll be a link in the bio if you want to uh, look to possibly take the signals and take these trades with me again 
they're not just signals it's also mentorship i do talk a lot about psychology and we do have our live webinars and everything else in the signal room itself if you want to find more info on that there'll be obviously a link in the description as well so hopefully you guys did benefit off of this video and i'll talk to everybody in the next one peace out guys